Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, cosmic creatures. Um, I am super excited to be doing this one. This one has been like pulsating behind my eyes for about a week, maybe even possibly longer for, than that. So I'm really excited to finally have the chance to do it. Um, I can already feel this shift kind of blowing through. And so, um, and so I felt like it was important that I kind of get this up on here. Uh, so here we are. Hello. Feel free to say hi. Feel free to pop in the chat and like, let me know where you're at. I'm here in Canada guys. Um, hello, hello, hello. Okay. So as you guys know, I usually only do these things when I feel compelled. And again, this one has been kind of knocking behind my eyes for over a week. I just haven't actually had the chance to do it. And I got really trapped, stuck in my head about whether or not I should like set a time for this one so that people could come and watch it maybe somewhere a better platform like YouTube or something like that. But again, I'm going to just trust my process and just let it all come through me. And then I'll just pop it on YouTube uh, if I get the chance. Um, oh, Kate is here from Northern Virginia. That's amazing. I would absolutely love to see it there. I haven't really left Canada. Like I've been just over the border in the States, but that's like, that's it. I haven't gotten to, to travel at all. Um, my guides have been very present. Yes, it is definitely the time of year for that. Uh, Seattle, San Diego. Ah, this is so cool. You guys, sometimes it like boggles my mind that I actually get to communicate with people from all over the world. It is wild to me, especially because I haven't actually gotten to travel myself. Um, Kate is saying it's so hot today. It was just in Montreal though and loved it so much. Oh man, it's like so gray here. It's so cold. Um, so that sounds amazing. Um, okay. So right now, uh, <laughs> this one is going to be a little bit strange to talk about just because of the fact that the energy right now is there's some kind of heavy stuff going up for us as a collective. Um, and I'm sure that this is stuff that you'll be able to identify with because the way that things work. So as you guys know, I, I, my just had this book come out shadow work for hot messes. Thank you to everybody who bought it. Thank you to everybody that has left a review. Um, it's so important for authors. Uh, apparently 50 reviews is like kind of a magic number to help a book succeed, especially on the, um, Amazon platform, uh, which is, uh, frustrating because it's so hard to get reviews, but, um, but yeah, so basically in this book, I talk a little bit about the um, intersection of the personal shadow and the collective shadow. Now this, the way that I, um, the way that I communicate this to people who maybe are unfamiliar with the concept is kind of like the ocean and then when it rains. So when you think about um, the collective shadow, it's kind of like we are all part of this ocean and then it gets absorbed, sucked up, and then the raindrops would be like us as individuals. So the way that it works is like a cycle. Um, and so the individual shadow feeds into the collective shadow and the collective shadow feeds into the individual shadow. Now, now, when it comes to shadow work, I've been getting messages from people. I've actually gotten a few DMs like this talking about what we're seeing on the collective scale. Now, I don't uh, typically talk about current events on my page, and there's very intentional reasons for that. It's been really interesting to see people kind of read into why, you know, certain creators do or do not do that. Um, I think it's because we are all hyper aware, and I like my spaces to be a place where people can come up for air. Um, and I'll die on that hill. So anyway, as we talk about this subject though, I am going to have to touch on it a little bit. And that is that we are actually seeing on like pretty large scale and we have for some time, but we are seeing the collective shadow in a huge way. This is very difficult for people to hold. This is very difficult for our consciousness to hold. This is very difficult for our hearts to hold. This is very, um, it, it's a huge challenge. And I think that the challenge in it really arises from the fact that we are seeing intolerable things, but it's the contrast of what we are going through to individually that really colors um, how we interpret that and how we perceive that. So for example, I am in my house right now. I have heat. <laughs> I am sitting on a warm bed. I have children that I know are safe. It is very hard to look at the collective shadow. It's hard to look at what human beings are capable of. It's hard to look at what human beings, actual human beings, not statistics, not numbers, not anything like that. Human beings are going through 
sitting in this space. It's very hard to hold that. And it that contradiction and that kind of tension that we are all experiencing is really, uh, it, it's creating a cognitive dissonance that is very hard for us to hold and to accept. And for some people, this is, uh, you know, manifesting in, in ways of like lashing out. For other people, this is manifesting in ways of taking action. For other people, it's manifesting as absolute fucking paralysis. And I don't think that this is something that can be, mm, uh, I don't think this is a situation where we can kind of use our own judgments or our own ideas of what, you know, could or should be done. Because the thing is, we are all different people. We all process differently. We all um, interpret things differently depending on our own collections of values, shadows, what, whatever. And so I think it's really uh, easy for us to look at what other people are doing and, and assign value judgments or 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 ju kind of just look at it and think that it is right or not right or this and that. It's very hard for us to do that, though, because, you know, we're all different. We're all processing this kind of in our own way, in our own time. So I had somebody ask me before about... Um, you know, how do we on a personal level, how do we on a personal level deal with what we're seeing from like a shadow work perspective? And now shadow work is all about really taking some the things that are unconscious and making them conscious. What we are seeing on a collective scale right now is this overarching theme. And you're probably seeing it in your personal life as well, which is very much about um, things that are intolerable having to face them head on, having to face them head on. Now, a theme like that really reminds me a lot of the pandemic and the fact that, you know, say a person was having trouble in their marriage or say they were having trouble with their friends or something like that. That period of like prolonged, um, really like closing your circle, maybe being stuck in the house with people, there was no way that people could just gloss over um, problems that they had. There was a lot of like relationships that really had to like dig up their shit during COVID. There was a lot of like marriages that didn't fucking make it. Like you can only ignore problems or be willfully blind to them for so long. But at every point, there has to be um, a point where you have to face them. And I think that on a collective level, the inequity of the world, the inequity of what, you know, different people are living in right now, the inequity of, um, you know, deception and, you know, class wars and, and things like that, it's all getting to a point where it's, we can't, it's not unconscious anymore. This is something that has become very huge, very visible and we have to integrate it. So we have to be able to look at it and we have to be able to understand kind of the, uh, the unfairness of it all, the randomness of it all, the absolute, uh, you know, luck of the draw that it is to be born where you're born, all of that sort of stuff. So these are, um, themes that are playing out now. Um, and we can see this even beyond like, say, global politics or like, you know, global conflict or anything like that. I mean, fuck, even in like pop culture right now, we're seeing the same th thing, which is this idea of things that are intolerable, things that are not acceptable, things that are showing this all the hidden darkness, the secretive stuff, the, you know, the worst parts of our human nature, even those are coming to light right now. Um, and it, it, really makes me think of, say, the importance of context. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, what would be a good example? So a good example would be, this is so silly, but it, uh, I'll just use it anyway, because I think it's something that most people will be able to um, uh, tie something to. But a really great example for the context discussion is, say, Justin Bieber. Um, because I know that he's, you know, there was time periods where he was roasting it on a lot for being obnoxious, acting strangely, like just kind of seeming like, you know, a bit of a shit or whatever. With the further uh, amount of context that we've had now zooming out on the situation, that whole thing, all of those behaviors, we can look at all that stuff in hindsight and we can see it through a different light because, again, things that were hidden, things that were repressed have come to the surface. 
So I'm hoping that that, that makes sense there. So we're seeing that on a global scale as well. And you might be seeing that on an individual level. Also, what is happening is we're having this situation where collectively there's been a zooming out. There's been a zooming out, 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 out. And we're seeing more and we're seeing more and we're seeing more and we're seeing more. And like, how much are we meant to see? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? How much can we, uh, how much can we take? Like how much, you know what I mean? It's, it's just the sort of thing where we see that. And, and usually there's this, this, uh, immediate urge to try and shut down any connection to it whatsoever. So for example, Ooh, this is going to get me in hot water. Do I say it? Yes. I'm going to say it. Um, so for example, I have seen creators, getting bullied off this platform for not speaking on certain topics or saying what people want them to say or using their platform, how people want them to use it. Um, and again, uh, there's a variety of reasons why people may or may not want to do it. So for me personally, and you know, I, I also was kind of attacked for this at one point, but whatever. Um, for me, I have a lot of people because I talk about mental health and things like that. I have a lot of people that are literally an active crisis in my DMs. <laughs> like this happens to me all the time. Um, I, I understand because, you know, we really, as human beings, we want connection. People are not okay over the last bunch of years. Um, and it seems like it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So when it comes to airing, you know, the horrors of the world, broadcasting them in real time and adding my voice to the mix, I don't see that as my place. So that's why I don't do it. But getting back to what I was saying before, I've seen people getting bullied off this platform for that. And it's interesting because that um, that projection, so that desire to kind of say, well, you're not you're like, you're not saying those are your values. You're not saying this. You're not saying that. Like that is really kind of a shadowy thing. That is a, a way to kind of go, not me. Like that isn't me. That couldn't be me. I am separating myself from this. I am, you know, which obviously we would all want to do. But I think the really um, powerful healing is going to come from a place when we can look at the things that are happening in the world and we can look at the things that are happening in our lives and we can say, you know, as a human being, Maybe there's some of that within me. I don't express it. Maybe that goes against my values. But as a human being, we all more or less have the same hardware, right? We all have more or less, you know, we've got brains, we've got bodies, we are, you know, limited to the same kind of uh, limitations of like mundane reality. And so I think it's really important that instead of distancing ourselves, we look at it and we go, is there an element of that within myself? And if there is, what does it look like on the scale that I have? What does it look like in my individual life? What am I doing with my time? What am I doing with my actions? So for example, trying to protest or trying to um uh trying to protest or trying to take action that actually will have a uh an effect on that climate i believe is a better way to spend your energy than say getting angry at people for not doing what you want them to do because to me that seems very similar um of the kind of shadows that we're trying to distance ourselves from right um things like control things like power that sort of thing so uh this is just something that has been coming up lately i'm seeing it a lot again i feel like we're on the tail end of this but there's going to be situations where people are looking at their relationships or whatever and they're you know behavior they've been able to excuse before or things they've been able to overlook or justify them to themselves things are getting to a point where we are zooming out so much that all of those things are becoming intolerable and we have to face them we have to face them and i believe the more we face them in our own lives and the more we kind of understand uh you know what am i doing with my time what am i doing with my energy what are my core values a lot of people don't even um, really think about that on a day to day, but like, what are my core values? What are important to me? What, uh, role can I play in the larger scheme of, you know, the collective, uh, the more that that happens, the better. And I think that that's something that we're being called to do on a massive level. I think that's something we're being called to do on a massive level. There's a lot of illusions that are kind of getting to the place where they've lost their sparkle. They're getting to a place where they've lost their sparkle. Um, and I think that it's, you know, something about the modern world and certainly the social media age seems to be 
that there's been this push towards black and white thinking or like sides. There's this side, there's that side, it's black, it's white, there's good, there's bad, whatever. But as most people know, well, most people that have done a lot of inner work and things like that is that there, it's not actually that simple. There's usually some form of shades of gray and you have to be able to hold contradictory things in your head at the same time and recognize that multiple things can be true. And it's very hard to do that. It's also, uh, as a side effect of that is you have to recognize that other people are living in very dramatically different realities. So the way that they're perceiving depend the world or whatever's happening for them it's being filtered through their field, their awareness, what their triggers are, what their core wounds are, what their core values are, all of these sorts of things, which makes it so that their perception and the reality they're living in, the world they're living in, the way they're interpreting it, the way they're communicating it, the things that are important to them are going to be dramatically different than, say, you. There are so many people in this world that I find absolutely abhorrent <laughs> or value systems or anything like that. I just don't understand it whatsoever, but I can recognize that they live in a different say reality than me because their values are different the way they interpret things are different and maybe the way that they uh, were brought up is different um i'm hoping that this is making sense so we're at a point right now collectively where things are zooming out um in such a way that we're having to not only look at the collective and say okay so uh, like how is it that I can live here and have things be so uh, good? I mean, there's always some to, things to complain about. Trust me, I live in Canada and I've got a million complaints about Canada while also recognizing that, holy shit, like how lucky am I that I just by roll of the dice was born here? Um, and so I think that when it comes to really understanding sort of the collective shadow and how that interplays with the personal shadow, it's really understanding what are your personal shadows um, and, and trying to work on them in your life because again I think they feed into each other so I think that the collective is really um, the frequency of the collective gets kind of rises when people start putting more effort more energy into themselves into their relationships and making their little corner of the world a good place a nice place a joyous place a, a you know a place where things like fairness or honesty or integrity or things like that really matter and then as we do that, the the issues with the collective and like the glaring fucking problems with it becomes so much more illuminated, right? And so I think that's why we're seeing what we're seeing because it's like, okay, we can look around, we can go politics are corrupt. Um, uh, our, our economic system is like corrupt. The fact that, you know, our entire world has all these people and there's people living in dramatically different um, circumstances and, and there's nothing fair about it. There's nothing fair about the fact that regular people are impacted by the machine of war. It's incomprehensible it really is it's incomprehensible um the fact that human beings essentially get fucked because of rich people games you know what i mean and i just it's very hard to to hold those things at the same time so um my advice or I guess my kind of prescri prescription to everybody who's kind of going through something like this where they're actually being able to see this is to really start looking at their own lives in a very intentional way. I have a class that's called Matrix to Magic. I have been thinking of releasing it for free just because I feel like people need it. Um, yeah, I feel like people need it, but then also it's kind of like I might uh, get in shit for not reading the room kind of thing because in it I say that you have to be very wary of where your attention goes, but be very wary of of what actions you're taking, um, both in your personal life and uh, and kind of as a collective. What can we what can we do? Like, what can we? What is that? What are the actual moves that we can make? Um. So a lot of you that have taken Matrix to Magic know like my uh, my philosophy on doom scrolling. I personally, I'm 41. So when I was young, I grew up and you had to watch the news like the news came on at certain times a day. And that's like when you watch the news or you read the paper and it was like shit happened. And then it was like if it didn't make it to press time, it wouldn't be in the next day's paper. Like it was so different. Whereas now you can see everything. You can watch the world burn in real time. Do I think that helps us as a collective? Absolutely fucking not. 
how could it? That seems insane to me. Like, why would you want it, the same populace that needs to take action in order to try and create the kind of change that our world desperately needs cannot be paralyzed by fear, I don't think. They cannot be paralyzed into a place of there's something called learned helplessness so learned helplessness is this phenomena psychological phenomena that can happen in say situations of abuse or etc where somebody feels like they actually if they were to make a move or if they were to try and change something it wouldn't do anything so people kind of just roll over and give up that is not where we need people to be. That is not where we need the collective to be. That is not going to be anything that enhances or helps anything whatsoever. And so um, just being very mindful and aware of that sort of stuff, because, um, you know, the vision, the, the image that comes with this for me is like, say somebody is really wrapped up in, in doom scrolling. And I'm not saying being aware of what's happening in the world. I'm saying doom scrolling. So I'm saying something that is not creating real world action so wrapped up in it because they feel like they really have to be and say their children are like looking for their attention or something like that what's happening there is the the attention is being funneled in a way that is not actually helping the collective or their life because truly one of the biggest impacts we can make is in our immediate circles right in our communities in our family um and, and in our own worlds. And I think that, you know, if you imagine every person is saying having a glowing circle of, of goodness around them, if each person really just focuses on expanding that, that can make so much more light in the world. That's kind of how I look at it. So, um, okay. I am probably going to cut this off. This wasn't as concise as I wanted to be. I feel like I just like blah, 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 started rambling, but I'm going to leave it because that's just where we're at. So when it comes to that question of the individual versus the collective shadow, I think it's really important to look at the, the things that are being illuminated, look at the collective shadow right now and really just kind of instead of trying to just push it away, trying to understand what our species is capable, what our consciousness is capable, and really trying to take that information and use it for good. Um, I might be a little bit toxic in the sense that I like to imagine better possibilities. I like to imagine a better future. I like to think of, of uh, you know, if I see a, a concrete wall with a metal door in it, I like to imagine how can I cut a window into this bitch and get around it. To me, that's more interesting. And I think that we need interesting thinking, right? I think what our world needs and probably what a lot of us need on an individual level, having to participate in capitalism and like this bullshit mundane realm that really like, why, why, why any of it? Why? <laughs> so I think that the, uh, the way that you can get around that is imagination. It's, it's really trying to lean into what could be a new thing. What could be a novel thing? Uh, what is it? There's a quote by Terrence McKenna about business as usual. We don't need business as usual. That's the last thing we need. We need to figure out how to utilize things like imagination, creativity, hope, um, how we can dream a better world and how we can try and um, really make this happen even on our own doorsteps, in our own homes, in our own whatever, um, the people that we touch. I mean, God, I've had experiences where a stranger has touched my lives and I, and I still can think about it. And it's been a brief, almost, you could almost think of it as a meaningless interaction. Isn't that wild? This is the effect that we have on each other. And yet we overlook it almost completely, almost completely. So I think that being wary of uh, just looking at, okay, how can I make this better? So I think uh, on a personal level, really encountering your own shadows, uh, shameless plug for my book, <laughs> but on a personal level, really encountering your shadows and recognizing when you see the collective shadow, when you see the, the level of deception, when you see the level of inequity and unfairness and stuff and asking yourself, what is this bringing up within me? And what are actions that I can do, you know, first on, on a trying 
trying to heal the collective level. So you could look at that as taking action. You could look at that, that as writing letters. You could look at it as how you vote. You could look at it as um, protest, any of those sorts of things. Those are all like more of the how to address the collective element. But even again, on a personal level, because when you think about that cycle, that cycle of the individual and the collective feeding into each other, really recognizing what your time and attention is going through. Imagine, imagine for a second that you had the power with your thoughts, with your imagination, with your creativity to change the world. How would you, how would you spend your waking hours? What would be the things you would look at? What would be, you know, the, the things that you would do? How would you relate to people? How would you relate to your family? How would you relate to a stranger? How would you relate to somebody that you hate? <laughs> How would you relate to somebody that you don't understand? Um, so yeah, the theme right now is just the, um, the illumination or the uncovering or the, uh, the, the, the repressed kind of intolerable things coming to light and they have to be addressed. You have to address them. So if that's on your, in your individual life, say your, your job sucks or your relationship sucks, or you're engaging in a behavior that is not fulfilling you and it's just getting things worse and worse and worse, say there's addiction or anything like that. These things need to be faced. They need to be faced. That is the smallest thing you can do, which is huge, but that is the smallest thing you can do as an add on an individual level. Um, so yeah, I think that that is kind of all I have to say about that. So thank you to everybody that stuck with me for this. I might actually post this one, uh, but we'll see. We will see. Um, but I just want to say that I love you guys. Um, we're living in a very strange time. There's never really been not a strange time, I think, to be a human being, but I think the, um, rapid acceleration of, of what we're seeing in the, um, the the fact that there are no built-in boundaries to it um, makes a big difference. Um, and so I think that we all have a responsibility on our uh, on an inner level to create those boundaries. See here, now I'm pretty much doing my Matrix to Magic class right now, but um, I think I might pop it. I think I might pop it on Visible as YouTube for people that need it, even if people yell at me, whatever. Um, but I love you guys. Have a really great day. <laughs>